What's up, YouTube? Ryan Panny here. Hope you guys are doing reasonably well. It is time for part two of my mid-year album list. Last week we did all the metal albums, and this week we're gonna take a little break from being pissed off of the world for a little bit and talk about all the fantastic releases from the last six months that had nothing to do with heavy metal. Which, thank God, I, every time I do these lists, I'm always reminded why I choose to separate the metal and the non-metal camps. Like, it's literally two different sides of my personality and my taste. Which, if I was into that stupid fucking horoscope shit, maybe I'd say it's because I'm a Gemini, but I'm not, so tough shit. And Ended up with a really interesting group this time around. You know, I never quite know what that genre mix is gonna look like when I do this list especially, but I ended up with a bunch of great hip hop records on here, some dance music, which is a genre that I love more and more every year. Several great R&B records were in contention this time around, uh, some alternative stuff, one great country album made this list. I feel really good about the group of artists that I'm sort of bigging up with this video. The release date cutoff for this list was June 16th, so anything that dropped in the latter half of June or so far in July wasn't eligible. And uh, as always, I'm gonna encourage you guys to take the exact order of this list with a bit of a grain of salt. And yeah, let's just get right into it. Glad I could squeeze Charlie Puth's voice notes into this list, the number 10 slot. This record was, at least from where I'm sitting, a relatively bland pop star making a pretty ballsy attempt at a full-on R&B record, and I loved it. I don't know how the diehard R&B fans felt, but I thought that smooth cuts like the, the Boys to Men collab, uh, If You Leave Me Now, that song Patient with those Rhythm Nation era Janet Jackson style drums in them, I thought all of it was very convincing. And it's just like the perfect summer album. Like how could you not be bumping like the Kehlani collab, Done For Me, or The Way I Am, the opening song, or LA Girls, how could you not be bumping these songs out of your car window this summer? Look, I didn't expect to fuck with the LP at all. I almost I, I almost didn't give it a shot, but let this be a lesson. I'm glad I did. Let that be a lesson. Even if you hate this album, maybe it just it's always worth it to give something a shot. If you think there's even like a speck of a chance that it might win you over. So yeah, I don't know how the R&B critics felt about it or the people who are really in that world, but I, I loved it. At number nine, a relatively straightforward pick, Above and Beyond with Common Ground, which is a stellar trance album if you're into dance music at all. On this record, Above and Beyond offer a very digestible but impressively diverse platter of tracks here, from soaring triumphant party anthems like My Own Hymn and Happiness Amplified and Northern Soul to stuff that's a little more sensual like Naked or more melancholy vibes like Bittersweet and Blue, which is one of my favorite cuts on here. The catch with this album is that it is very vocal heavy, with 10 of the 13 tracks featuring guest vocalists who, by all accounts, turn in great performances. But you have to enjoy your EDM with vocals powering the song forward and with a more traditional verse chorus verse chorus song structure if you're gonna dig this album. If you have the taste buds for that type of EDM, this album will be perfect for you. It's so in tune with what I like in trance music that it almost makes me cry. This album is just a, it's as beautiful a listen for a late night drive as it is for a summertime day drink. It's a, it's a must listen for both of those circumstances. And weirdly enough, because it came out in January, I actually use this album to power through the, the worst of the winter in New England. I spent a lot of uh, cold, snowy drives to work listening to this album, kind of fantasizing about uh, what the summer would be like <laughs> and <laughs> not wearing fucking 10 layers of clothes every morning. Numero ocho, at first <laughs> I just resisted and resisted and resisted putting this album on my list, but then I quickly realized that it was pretty much all I listened to for all of June, so Kanye West with Ye. Aside from maybe his abrasive 2013 release, Yeezus, depends on who you ask, this is probably the most mixed critical reception that a Kanye album has ever got. You know, there are a lot of liberals pissed off about the Trump stuff, even going into the album before they heard a note of it. There's the fact that it's fucking 20 minutes long, which is a little weird, a little unconventional. And there's the fact that the production and the rhymes feel so current, like they were written last week, which they pretty much were when this album came out. A lot of distaste for this album out there. But the more I listened to it and lived with it, it's one of my favorite Kanye releases. Not since 808s and Heartbreak 10 years ago now has Kanye's music been this honest and this vulnerable. Since that record, there's been a bit of a facade and a bit of the tabloid life that's kind of taken him over, but this is why we fell in love with him in the first place. Like, he bears his soul on this album, and, and since he's such a chaotic personality, that means that we get everything in just 20 minutes. We get the whole spectrum on here, from dark, suicidal thoughts on the opening track, uh, I Thought About Killing You, which is a very chilling opener to this album. You get goofy sex jokes on All Mine. You get tear-inducing paternal sentiments on the closing track, Violent Crimes, which is probably my favorite. And you see, because this album is only 20 minutes long, you keep coming back to it, because it's an album that, emotionally speaking, gives you more 
more in 20 minutes than most artists can say in over an hour. So with just seven tracks and me listening to it straight for basically a month, these songs are already permanently seared into my DNA. At number seven, Jay-Z and Beyonce, AKA the Carters with Everything Is Love. When music's biggest power couple dropped this thing out of nowhere, a day after my birthday actually, I was real skeptical, man. I was just like, this thing could be so fucking corny. But instead I was surprised in a very good way and I was thrilled by how this album basically like carves out a new subgenre for hip hop. I've spoken about that whole adult contemporary hip hop thing in my Nas review that I did recently, where this, there's this whole trend where all these aging veteran rappers are in their 40s now, so they're rapping about more mature, more adult topics. But Everything Is Love takes that concept even a step further as you're listening to basically a couple rap about their own marriage the ups and downs, the business decisions that are involved, the finances of it, the vacations they took together. It's like, it's a real intimate thing. I just think it's a real unique hip hop album. I've never heard one quite like it. And you know, having a slapper like Ape Shit or a really smooth R&B song like Heard About Us, shit like that doesn't hurt either. Just missing the top five here at number six, I've got Beach House's seventh album, the very creatively titled Seven. This, I, I will forever remember this as the record that finally got me all the way in to dream pop. And now I can't get enough of groups like Olvays and Atlas Sound. And it's pretty much all thanks to this album and mesmerizing songs on here like Lemon Glow and Pay No Mind and Woo and Drunk in LA. It's just been the perfect relaxation album for me like the last couple months since it's been out. It's, it's kind of like getting high at the end of a work day. It's just, it's, it should be required listening for anybody who's about to like punch somebody or do something really stupid, cheat on their wife. There should be a requirement that they just, they just sit down with this fucking album and just take a little breath. It's, a, it's a, just a very zen listen. It's the one album on this list, more than any of the other ones I'm gonna talk about, that I would literally recommend to anybody with any music taste. So yeah, I'm just so happy I got into Beach House and I got into this genre of music that I'm quickly falling in love with. Okay, at number five, Janelle Monet with Dirty Computer, an absurdly good R&B record full of the kind of defiant, empowering, and, and sex positive lyrical themes that are bound to inspire any listener. Whether you're a part of Janelle Monae's marginalized demographic as a black woman or as an LGBTQ or not. I found this album inspiring as a white man. It inspired me to want to be myself. I just think on this record, Janelle sings with the kind of swaggering, no fucks given attitude that can only come from someone who's been through a lot recently and come out the other end a stronger person. And of course, one of the biggest reasons that Dirty Computer has been so well received is that tracks like Americans and Make Me Feel absolutely reek of Prince's influence, which that might have something to do with the fact that Prince allegedly contributed to this album. And in addition to that Prince vibe, she fleshes the rest of this LP out nicely with, with great danceable moments like Screwed, which is one of my favorite tracks on here. There are nods to hip hop and to trap on songs like Django Jane. And then a track like Take a Bite is real funky. Just a powerful album, lyrically, sonically, stylistically, thematically. It's one of the first releases I think of from this year that is really critic proof unlike many other music that I'm gonna discuss on this list. Number four, I'm giving to Pusha T with Daytona, the first and best received release from that five week Wyoming Sessions release run that Kanye West had. I think pretty much the entire hip hop community would agree with me when I say that this is a short but sweet project that saw both Push and Ye in top form. It's an airtight seven tracks, chock full of that classic sample heavy production from Kanye and some convincing, carefully crafted Coke Boy rhymes from Pusha T. There's pretty much nothing more to say about this one. Now for maybe my most unusual pick here at number three, the Steve Angelo album, Human. The former Swedish house mafia member came through with a 90 minute spirituality themed EDM concept album, which you don't have to tell me that this is a very difficult sell for both my viewers and just for my personal friends in my own life, but goddamn pun intended. This album, the more I listened to it, it just kept climbing higher and higher and higher on this list. You see, in the, in the dance music genre, Human is, is a very rare album experience for me in that it's like a, it's a very immersive listen. Like I sit down, turn the lights off and listen to this album for 90 minutes straight. And it's almost like a mindfulness thing. Like I'm kind of meditating. I can't name another dance album that I've done something like that with. There are albums that I can listen to straight through like Daft Punk's Discovery, obviously, but this is like a, a totally different thing. It's, it's a very immersive listen. It is not for short attention spans, definitely not. But once I gave this thing a few good sit downs, 
it is some of the most larger than life, expansive, emotionally charged, and yes, spiritual EDM that I've ever listened to. Again, it doesn't reward short attention spans or cherry picking. There are some blissful bangers on here like Paradiso and Are You, and there's, there are a few rewarding vocal tracks on here like Flashing Lights and Breaking Kind and Dopamine, but then there are songs like 21, which is just three minutes of drums, or a song like God, which literally has a two minute and 55 second buildup, or a song like Eros, which is just kind of ambiance. And all these songs flow together exceptionally well, but they have to be experienced that way. So definitely give this album a try if you're feeling courageous like I was back in April, because for me, it ended up being one of the best decisions that I've made all year. In stark contrast to that, my number two pick is an album that's basically gonna sell itself, Dark Horse by Devin Dawson, one of the best modern country records, period. Devin Dawson definitely has won over a large portion of his fan base, because songs like All On Me and Placebo are so hooky and so instantly likable. But the thing that most impresses me about Dark Horse, Dawson's unbelievable knack for writing conceptual songs. Every song on this record is about something. There's always like a clever motif behind it. Like the song War Pain is basically about a, a woman putting on makeup and getting revenge on her man. Second Hand Hurt is basically about a guy who basically dumps a girl and then experiences more pain than he expected, even though he's not the, the dumpy. And then second to last, the narrator in that song is like essentially coming to terms with just being comfortable that this girl is using him in a sexual way. And he's so good at sticking to a concept within a song and taking it to creative places and being so descriptive that you can literally visualize whatever the story is. Like the song, I don't care who sees, I can literally visualize this couple where they go out in public and, and the dude is so madly in love with her that he stops being self-conscious about PDA. Like I can actually see that. I can see the, the hurt woman going out and uh, and getting revenge on her man. And yeah, Devin Dawson is an extremely talented dude and I cannot wait to follow his career after this debut. I think he's gonna be a real asset to country music. And at number one, kind of by default, just based on amount of listens, Royce the 5'9 with Book of Ryan. You know, two years ago, I praised the Royce album Layers for how personal it was and how much of Royce the human being it revealed. But it turns out that Layers was only scratching the surface. Book of Ryan is like a full-blown concept album about Royce's life. And these 20 tracks straight up takes you through who he is and why. His storytelling on this album is it's unparalleled. He lets you in on his family life growing up in a very real and very vivid way on the song Power, which is probably my favorite cut on here. And there's a song like Bobble Boat with J. Cole, which finds him reminiscing more on the good times in this childhood. A song like Cocaine deals directly with his father's drug habit. You're literally following Royce around through his childhood and young adult life, like a, like a documentary crew almost. I just love hip hop albums like that. And I rarely say this about any hip hop album ever, but I really enjoy the skits on this record, which are mostly made up of just Royce explaining the themes and the stories in greater detail. And ultimately, since Royce knows why we're here, why we're fans of his, I'm glad that he took a few tracks and just give us straight fucking bars, like the Eminem collaboration, Caterpillar. One of my favorite songs on here is Summer on Lock with Jada Kiss and Pusha T and Fabulous, the, the latter of which just murders his guest verse. I haven't heard a, a Fabulous verse like that in a couple years. It's a fucking incredible record. I, I don't know how he's gonna top it. I don't know, this might be the peak of Royce of Five Nine's career. And yeah, spoiler alert, this is also my number one rap record of the year. Sorry. And that about does it for this list. My last uh, mid-year list will be the hip hop one that'll go up on my written blog in a few days. So be on the lookout for that. And then it is back to business. Really hope you guys end up checking out and hopefully enjoying some of these records that I've discussed in here, especially if you hadn't heard of them before. Because after all, that's, what, that's the whole point of these lists, right? And as always, thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoy this video and are not yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so by clicking right over here or just checking out any of the other weekly content that I publish about music. Really appreciate you guys liking and supporting, sharing, commenting, arguing, the whole nine. All of your support is greatly appreciated and I will see you guys soon.